Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar tonight, Recreational Opportunities Close to Home. I'm Amy Collins with McHenry County Conservation District, and we're pleased to be offering a series of webinars this spring with the Fox River Grove Memorial Library on a number of different conservation and nature related topics. Tonight, we're gonna to be learning all about places to go and things to do in the outdoors right here in McHenry County. And I wanna start first by talking about McHenry County Conservation District where I work. The district is your local conservation agency founded by voter referendum in 1971. So that makes this our 50th anniversary in 2021. And in the time that we've been working here in McHenry County, we have focused on three broad goals. The first, protecting public lands and restoring critical habitat that benefits people, plants, and animals. Creating wonderful places and opportunities for people to explore and enjoy the outdoors with a wide variety of different activities, which we're going to get into in more detail tonight. And finally, serving our local communities with environmental education programming, including programs in our local schools. A little bit of information here about the district by the numbers. The district has protected more than 25,000 acres of public open space since our founding in 1971. Nearly half of that amount has been restored to high quality wildlife habitat or is in the process of being restored. And we serve more than 12,000 people every year with our education programs for the public and in schools, as well as special events. Now, as we get into our content tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit about a framework for this. Why is access to open space so important to our quality of life? And there's a lot of studies that back up why access to open space benefits our lives. We're going to go through some of those right now. Now, first off, we know the benefits of having recreational opportunities in terms of physical exercise. In fact, according to this report, the health and social benefits of recreation put out by the State of California Resources Agency in 2005, we know that on average, every hour that we spend exercising increases our life expectancy by two hours, kind of a ratio of two to one. It's a benefit for our physical bodies. It's a benefit for preventing uh, diseases, particularly lifestyle diseases. And there are a lot of other benefits that come along with those physical health benefits. But even doctors and healthcare agencies are getting in on the idea that having opportunities to exercise in the outdoors in particular is very beneficial to physical health. In fact, over the last few years, we've seen doctors actually creating park prescriptions or nature prescriptions ordering their patients who may be facing uh, diseases or lifestyle diseases to spend time in the outdoors on a regular basis doing physical activities. And another benefit that comes along with the physical health benefits of being outside in nature doing physical activities is benefits to our mental well-being. We know from studies that contact with nature helps our level of happiness, our level of well-being our positive attitudes, the way that we interact with others socially, uh, lowering levels of stress in our lives, helping the symptoms of different mental health disorders, and also even providing an overall sense of meaning and purpose in our lives. <clears throat> and that's not just something that affects adults, it affects our children as well. We know from studies that green spaces and outdoor classrooms near schools where kids can get exposure to nature is good for them on many different levels. Cognitive development improves, self-control behaviors improve, uh, working memory improves, children have more cognitive flexibility, they're able to pay attention longer. And conversely, other studies have shown that children who live in very urban environments without a lot of plant matter around them or access to open spaces that have more of a natural character have a higher uh, link to rates of attention deficit disorders. And this isn't just something that affects us individually for our physical and mental health or for our children's um, learning capabilities. It's also something that affects us on a community basis. Back in 2010, the Surgeon General at the time put out a report called Vision for a Healthy and Fit Nation, Nation in which they talked 
uh, about the importance of having environments around us that help us practice healthy behaviors. And the neighborhoods and communities needed to come together to focus on creating those kinds of environments right in people's backyards. And specifically, this report called out the residents needed access to outdoor recreational facilities, places where they could do more walking and more bicycling, and also safety of those areas so that people were able to get outside on a regular basis and feel and experience safety while they were doing those activities. <clears throat> now, fortunately here in McHenry County, we have access to all of these things. And so I wanted to run through a list of some of the open space opportunities that are here in McHenry County. What we're really gonna be fo focusing on tonight are the McHenry County Conservation District's resources, our conservation areas. That's gonna be the meat of what we talk about tonight. But I also wanted to mention that we're not the only open space agency or organization here in McHenry County. In fact, your local community, village or city may have its own community park and recreation department or a division of the local government that provides open spaces for community residents we also have nonprofit organizations and land trusts like the Land Conservancy of McHenry County operating right here in McHenry County, owning and providing access to the public for nature preserve areas. We also have two state parks run by the state of Illinois here, Chain of Lakes in Spring Grove and Moraine Hills in McHenry. Those are very popular places that are always full of people enjoying outdoor activities year round. And finally, one place that you might not be too familiar with or might be hearing about for the first time is our local federal lands. That's Hackmatack National Wildlife Refuge. This place was established in 2012 by the U.S. Department of the Interior and it's managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And while Hackmatack is still pretty small, there are a few sites that are currently open to the public. And the intent of this wildlife refuge is to uh, connect and expand existing conservation areas, nature preserves, and parks to provide better wildlife habitat, linking all of those places so that animals have safe passage between natural areas and so people have more places to go outside and enjoy activities like hiking and bird watching. Now I wanna direct you to a regional resource that helps you find all of the areas in the Chicago region, which includes McHenry County, where you can go outside and do outdoor activities. This is the Get Outside Chicago map, which has been put together by an organization in Chicago known as Open Lands. You can find it at openlands.org forward slash get outside. And you can see from this little screenshot right here that this uh, website resource is intended to show you all of the different places in the broader Chicago region where you can do outdoor activities of many different kinds. And you can tell from this map that there's an awful lot to do here, right, in our relatively urban environment. And this map will extend up into Wisconsin and over into Indiana as well for people who want to get a little bit further away from home and explore what this part of the Midwest has to offer. The nice thing about the Get Outside Chicago map is that you can actually sort and filter by the kind of activity that you're interested in doing. And you can see in this little box here, I selected biking. And when I picked that activity, a whole bunch of places right close to my house came up where I could do biking activities. So this is a really great resource. If you're interested in seeing <clears throat> not only what's here in McHenry County from an outside perspective, but also things that are outside the county that you could do as well. Now, here at the Conservation District's website, mccdistrict.org, we have the exact same kind of interactive map, which is super helpful to find all of the places that the Conservation District owns and operates for public use right close to your backyard. And so you can see here by the screenshot that you can find a site that's close to your house in McHenry County, and you can also sort by the different activities that we offer here at Selective Fishing, and I came up with a great list of Conservation District sites where I could go fishing and all the information I need to prepare to do that. So definitely check out the district's website. You're gonna hear me refer to the district's website over and over again throughout our presentation tonight because it's really the one-stop shop to find everything related to the district and everything that we offer to do in the outdoors. So what can you do at a district site? There's an awful lot. And we're gonna to touch base on all of these different types of activities today. But just to run through this list, you can uh, go hiking, bicycling, camping, canoeing and kayaking on a water trail, 
wildlife watching, horseback riding, picnicking, and holding parties in the outdoors, fishing, hunting, winter activities like snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and snowmobiling. We have ADA, or Americans with Disability Act, accessible outdoor experiences at different sites. We have education programs and special events to get you involved at a deeper level with conservation district sites. And we also have even deeper experiences with our volunteer program. Before we get into all these different activities and where you can do them though, I wanna give you a little bit of a taste of the broad range of places that we offer. And we're gonna kind of look at the different scale of places that we offer, starting with the size of conservation district areas here in McHenry County. You can see on this map that I've highlighted some of the largest communities so you can get a sense of place and figure out where you live close to those areas like Woodstock, Marengo, Crystal Lake, and McHenry, and Harvard. And let's take a look at our two largest sites and where they fall within this landscape of McHenry County. The largest conservation area that we have for public use is Glacial Park. This is a huge site located north of McHenry and it is over 3,400 acres, nearly a square mile of protected open space full of trails and facilities and activities to do. It's followed closely by our second largest site, Pleasant Valley, which is over 2,000 acres, and that's located to the south of Woodstock. Again, it's got a lot of trails and activities to do, and we're gonna look more deeply at both of those sites later on. We also have small sites too, though. In fact, one of our smallest sites is the County Line Road Access Point, a place where you can get on the Kishwaukee River to go canoeing or kayaking. We're gonna talk more about that one later on as well, but this is a site that's just 10 acres to the west of Marengo. And nestled into Bull Valley is our second smallest site, Boger Bog. It doesn't have a particularly long trail, but it goes through incredible uh, rare natural communities, including a fen ecosystem, it's a type of wetland. And there are amenities there that make a beautiful place to bring a sketchbook or a journal or a book, or even just sit there and enjoy a quiet, peaceful space outside nature. So in other words, there are a range of places you can go at different scales to experience nature in different ways. That also extends to our trails that we have for people to go biking, hiking, snowmobiling, and other activities like that. Our longest trail that we own and maintain is the Prairie Trail, which runs 26 miles all the way through the county from Richmond to Algonquin. Once you get down into Algonquin, this trail actually connects with other trail systems in Kane County and later on in Cook County. So you can make a very long multi-day trip on a bike if you'd like to. And right now, while it doesn't connect much further than Genoa City, Wisconsin over the state line, eventually we hope that there will be opportunities to connect this trail up into Lake Geneva and other cities nearby in Wisconsin. <clears throat> we also have a very short bike trail by comparison to the Prairie Trail, and that's the Stone Mill Trail up in the Harvard area. This runs from the little community of Shemung to the west of Harvard, back into Harvard's Milky Way Park area, a total of 1.5 miles. If you have a child that's just getting started with bicycling, or is used to using a trailer with a bicycle, this is a really great place for a nice, short, manageable day trip uh, on an open trail with a great flat surface for beginning bicyclists. <clears throat> I also want to show you some of our sites that keep busy. These are places that are very popular and often have a lot of people at them and a lot of things to do. One of our most popular sites is the Hollows in Crystal Lake. Uh, we also have Felpro Triple R in Cary, just a little bit to the northeast. And up in Harvard, we have our popular site, Rush Creek. And again, we're going to talk more about each of these sites later on in the presentation. But if you want to get away from the hustle and bustle and see a quieter side of nature, we also have sites that get plenty of visitors, but they're more spaced out or there's just smaller numbers of people that visit throughout the week. High Point in Alden is one of our quiet, beautiful sites. So is Winding Creek in Hebron, just a little bit to the southeast. And further to the northeast is the Elizabeth Lake Varga Natural Archaeological Site, which is also a relatively quiet space to enjoy nature in. Something for everybody. Now, in this next set of slides, I'm going to go through some activities that you can do at district sites. And I'm going to give you a couple of recommendations for places where you can do those activities. Now, I want to be clear 
of a couple of things here. First off, I'm going to show you an example of something you can do in a site you can do it on, but that's not going to be the only thing you can do at that site, nor is it going to be the only place that you can do that activity, if that makes sense. These are recommendations based on my own experience as a district staffer and someone who uses and enjoys conservation district sites on my own time. It's also based on recommendations not only from other staff at the conservation district, but a lot of our patrons and our program attendants attendees who tell us about their great experiences out in nature and their favorite places. So I hope that this will give you a taste of what we have to offer and help you find your favorite place here in McHenry County. We're going to start with hiking. And I think one of the best places to hike in McHenry County is that large site that we own up in the Ringwood area, Glacial Park. Within this park are five miles of trails that cover many different ranges of uh, of difficulty. We have uh, very hilly, sort of rugged trails like this one shown in the picture, which goes to the top of the glacial feature known as the Camelback Canes. The Canes were deposited by glaciers that moved over this landscape 22,000 years ago. And the grit, sand and gravel came out of the ice of those glaciers, plopped out in a pile and created these really unique hills in the landscape that you can hike right to the top of to get the views from up above. We also have flatter trails within Glacial Park. If you're not up for a rugged hike, there's a lot of variety there and a huge amount of space to cover. So you may pass other people on the trails, but you're still going to feel like you're in wide open spaces uh, out in the middle of nowhere and in a good way. I'm going to show you some maps of these sites that I'm talking about as we go. And I want to draw your attention to the little bubble surrounded in blue at the bottom. Uh, right here, I'm going to give you a general area of where the entrance is to each park. If you're familiar with your local part of McHenry County or with the county uh, as a whole, hopefully that'll give you a little bit of perspective as to where these particular places are located. Now, Glacial Park is, again, a huge site, more than 3,400 acres, which you can tell from this very large map here. There's a lot to offer and a lot of different ecosystems that you can hike through, including oak woodland, oak savanna, wetland areas, a cranberry bog, a kettle lake left behind by the glaciers, the canes that I mentioned earlier left behind by the glaciers, restored prairie, and much, much more. It's a very, very cool place. Another great place for a hike that we hear a lot about from our program participants and patrons is the Fox Bluff Conservation Area. This is located down in the Cary Algonquin area, and it's along the Fox River. So our trails out there actually lead down to the Fox River, which is a great place to go fishing or just sit and watch the boats go by and enjoy the views. Fox Bluffs entrance is located at Cold Springs Road off of Cary Algonquin Road in Cary. And you can see from the map here, there's that Fox River area with fishing access and a nice loop of trails that primarily goes through woodland areas. <clears throat> we'll skip from hiking to biking now. A great place to go biking on Conservation District trails is a place known as the Hebron Trail. The Hebron Trail goes by a protected natural area that's been undergoing restoration by district ecologists for a while now. It's known as Goose Lake. This is a great image of it from the trail. Goose Lake is a wonderful place for uh, wildlife watching. This is a place where migratory birds, waterfowl, cranes will stop over as they're migrating north to south or south to north in the spring and fall. And the Hebron Trail makes for a really nice day out on your bikes. So you can start in Richmond from the Prairie Trail and you can uh, bike a 1.5 mile section through another conservation district site, the North Branch Preserve. We'll talk more about that place later. And then you hop on the Hebron Trail proper and it takes you all the way past Goose Lake. And we just saw a picture of and into the village of Hebron where you can stop and have lunch at one of the local restaurants and then turn around and make your way back. A really nice um, length of trail that's about 4.5 miles from start to finish. Another trail that we offer that's quite a bit longer is the Ridgefield Trace Trail. This is a trail that runs between Crystal Lake and Woodstock. It's a fully paved trail the entire way, makes for a really nice smooth ride. 
And Ridgefield Trace is about 7.5 miles in total. It starts at Walk Up Road and goes all the way to Lake Street in Woodstock. And you can see that a portion of this trail runs right alongside Route 14. That was a deliberate choice in order to make this not only a recreational trail where people can enjoy walking, running, exercising, and riding bikes, but also an opportunity to provide a commuting trail for bicyclists going from work or shopping services in either community. So this is a really nice ride and it goes through the little um, community of Ridgefield right outside of Crystal Lake, which is a bit picturesque. Skipping ahead to another kind of trail, I'd like to talk a little bit about our water trails where you can go canoeing or kayaking. We have a premier Northeastern Illinois water trail right here in McHenry County. It's the Nipperson Creek Water Trail. And a huge portion of this goes right through Glacial Park. In fact, we have two um, stopovers or landing points along the way where you can put in or take out your canoe or kayak. We also have a uh, Lyle C. Thomas Memorial Park stopover in downtown Spring Grove, the historic section of that community. And a little bit further down on Route 12, we have the Nipperson Canoe Base, which is the last stop that you can get out of the Nipperson Creek um, on before you head into the Chain of Lakes proper and enter Fox Lake. And you can see all of those landings here along the trail on this map. A huge portion of this trail, 6.7 miles, goes through the protected landscape of Glacial Park. Wonderful restoration projects, including a huge stretch of creek that was put into a ditch back in the 1940s and then was removed from the ditch by the Conservation District and returned to its original curvy channel in a massive restoration project that took place in the 1990s and early 2000s. Um, altogether, if you're going to do this entire trail, it's a long run. You're looking at about eight hours of paddling and it's quite a distance all the way through, but it's definitely worth the trip. It makes for a wonderful day out and you can park cars at all of the different landings so that you have a ride back to where you started. It's a really great experience, highly recommended. The Nipperson Water Trail is not the only water trail that you can uh, experience in conservation district sites. We also have access to another trail called the Kishwaukee River Water Trail. The Kishwaukee River starts in its headwater area around Woodstock, and it flows like a trickle as it moves west into Marengo, where it starts to pick up steam and become larger, eventually turning into a fairly large river that flows through Boone County and into Winnebago County, eventually emptying into the Rock River near Rockford. It's also a great water trail to paddle with a canoe or a kayak, and the Conservation District has collaborated with our neighbors to the west, the Boone County Conservation District, to create a wonderful access point here at the County Line Road Canoe Access Area. This is that little 10-acre property that I mentioned early on in our presentation tonight. So you can see in this picture, this is the location where you can pull your car right up to get your boats out and into the water. And in this map here, you can see that on the east side of the uh, county line road road there running from north to south. There's a red dot there. That is the portion that the conservation district owns and manages here in McHenry County. And as you cross over county line road, you're in Boone County. And that um, little access point that we saw in the previous picture is the part that's owned and managed by the Boone County Conservation District. If you get into the Kishwaukee River from here, you're going to start paddling west and you'll eventually make it all the way down to the Rock River. It's a great trip. We also have horseback riding opportunities. If you own a horse or you know somebody that does, there's lots of places to get out with your animal friend and take a ride through restored natural areas. A very popular horseback riding trail area is Pleasant Valley. That's our second largest site to the south of Woodstock. And our horse trail there is just under a mile, but it runs all the way from the north end of the park where you can park your horse trailer and get your animal out and ready to go at Pleasant Valley Road in Woodstock, and then it goes all the way through the park, restored prairie, um, some groves of trees and some wetland areas down to Pencil Road in Huntley, at which point you can turn around and come back to get back to your trailer. It's a really nice ride from what I hear. 
We also have horseback riding trails in between McHenry and Prairie Grove at a site called Stickney Run. You can see this is a really beautiful area. And there are two units to Stickney Run. The main entrance for hikers is up off of State Park Road and Barrowville Road up there at the north where you see the little red arrow that says entrance. But the southern unit is where you'll wanna go if you're going to do some horseback riding. And you can also hike on these trails as well if you prefer. That's gonna be the entrance down off of Wright Road. The horse trail goes to the north of Wright Road as well as to the south. Um, and it goes through uh, half a mile of open prairie and oak savanna to the north of Wright Road and then a more wooded area of oak savanna to the south. A really nice ride also from what I hear. Moving on to an activity that's extremely popular at district sites and that's fishing. We have a lot of places that you can fish including the Nickerson Creek but I wanted to highlight a few other areas tonight, including one of our older conservation areas, Beck's Woods in Shemung, just to the west of Harvard. The Piscasaw Creek, which is a high quality stream that flows into the Kishwaukee River further south, goes right through Beck's Woods. And it's a place where you can catch rainbow trout, rock bass, smallmouth bass, bluegill, green sunfish, and apparently the fishing is really nice there. If you're going out to Bex Woods, you can choose to fish along the Piscasaw in multiple parts of the um, conservation area in the north unit off of Oak Grove Road and Maxon Road. There's fishing opportunities up there and also the main entrance to the park, which is down off of Bex Road and Pagels Road. Either unit on either side of Route 173 as you're heading west out of Harvard towards the Boone County line will find those fishing opportunities for you. Another very popular fishing place that we have available for people is the Hollows in Crystal Lake. And you'll recall early on, I mentioned that the Hollows is one of our very popular and quite busy conservation areas on a regular basis. This is a really great place to go for uh, people who like to fish of all different uh, experience levels, but it's a very good place to start introducing a young person to fishing because it's very easy to get up close to the lake and have a really easy experience getting started with the fishing process. We actually stock this lake, Lake Atwood, with largemouth bass and bluegill. There's also rainbow trout and channel catfish in this lake. So the fishing is also pretty good here from what I hear. Here's a picture of the hollows. The site has an interesting history. It was originally a gravel pit that was purchased by the conservation district and turned into a conservation area for public use. Lake Atwood is 22 acres in size. It's a pretty big fishing area. And one thing I want to point out is that we have an ADA accessible fishing pier that goes out into the middle of the lake and makes it easier for people in wheelchairs um, who need a steadier surface to fish from to get out close to the water. You're going to get to the hollows by heading east on Route 14, almost into Cary, just to the east of Route 31 in Crystal Lake. I'm going to move on to camping, one of my personal favorite activities. And what's really nice about camping in McHenry County is that we have places you can go that mean you can stay close to home, save some money, save some time, and introduce young people to camping without having to take a longer trip that might be a little bit more challenging, especially for the youngest ones. One of our most popular campgrounds is Thomas Woods Campground, which is at Marengo Ridge Conservation Area in Marengo. This is a more traditional campground with individual sites that you can reserve through our website or by calling one of our main office lines. And you can do tent camping there. We also have some RV spots. We have a few electrical sites even. There's um, bathroom facilities there, opportunities to have campfires. And it's a really great experience out there in that part of Marengo. Marengo Ridge is located just north of the city limits, but it's a very dark place that's out in farm country. So you get beautiful views of the stars when you're camping out there. And there's a lot of beautiful hiking trails, overlooks, and even a fishing pond to explore during your camping trip. Just keep in mind that Thomas Woods Campground is only open for part of the year. We do close in the winter time. So you'll wanna make your reservations for camping between May and October. Now, the other campgrounds that we have to offer are more rustic. They're group campgrounds where you can go with a family reunion, a group of family and friends, a scout group, uh, or other community groups, and have a nice camp out together. 
These are rustic sites, so they're not accessible for RVs. They don't have electricity, but they do have fire rings. They do have primitive toilets, and they have lots of space for putting up um, tents and other shelters. Rush Creek is one of our popular group campgrounds, but there are many sites that offer these group camping facilities. And as we move through some of the other maps we're gonna look at today, you'll see the little tent icon on those that's typically denoting a group campground. Here's a map of Rush Creek Conservation Area. And again, you'll recall from early on in the presentation that this is one of our popular areas out in Harvard. If you're um, heading north into Harvard from Route 14, when you get to McGuire Road, you're going to turn east, drive past the Walmart, and you'll find the entrance to the park on the south side of the road. And when you're camping in the group campground at Rush Creek, there's a lot of space for a big group to camp there. Plenty of space to spread out and have a lot of people join you. And there are lots of activities that you can do while you're there. We have a fishing pond at Rush Creek as well, a nice horseback riding trail, and a number of beautiful hiking trails too. Let's continue this community gathering theme and talk about some of the places where you can gather with a group of friends and family and have a picnic or a barbecue, maybe a wedding reception for a casual wedding or another type of party. Uh, I want to talk about Felpro Triple R in Cary here as one example of a great place to have one of these gatherings in a picnic shelter with grills available. Uh, and I want to talk about Felpro in particular because it's kind of a unique site among the Conservation District's land holdings. This was originally a corporate retreat center for the Felpro company. And when they um, worked with the Conservation District to protect it as public open space, the district decided to retain some of the amenities that had been built there for company employees and their families to enjoy when they came out to the retreat center. So there is an 18-hole disc golf course there, there's a sand volleyball court, there's a basketball court, and on some other features that you don't typically see on other conservation district sites because our public amenities tend to be very nature-focused and more passive, like bird watching and hiking and canoeing. So it's a great place to have some extra fun activities to do during your gathering. Here's a map of Felpro Triple R. This is nestled in all of the housing developments and um, water areas in Cary. There's two entrances to Felpro right off of Crystal Lake Road. The west entrance tends to be a little less busy than the east entrance, but the east entrance is going to be where you want to go if you want to start the disc golf course or if you want to use some of those um, picnicking amenities that I mentioned in the previous slide. The good news is, is that both of these entrances are connected by footpaths in the middle of the site, so you can get from one side of Felpro to the other. Here's a shot of one of our picnic shelters at another site that's nearby Felpro, Hickory Grove. It's a lovely place to have a picnic. You can see some of our amenities there, including charcoal grills and picnic tables for setting up food. This is a grove that is nestled with the shelter in the top of a hill that's surrounded by restored oak savanna with a beautiful sweeping view of the wetlands and woods below. Hickory Grove is actually three sites put together into one large conservation area. That shelter I showed you is at the Hickory Grove Highlands. There's also another site called Hickory Grove Riverfront, which butts up to the Fox River. And then a little bit to the east of this complex is the adjacent Lions Prairie and Marsh site, which is a really high quality natural area with some wonderful trails in it. And if you're, uh, again, renting a picnic shelter, at Hickory Grove, there are beautiful hiking trails, including a solar lit loop that stays open a little bit later into the evening and some great wetlands and woodlands to hike through. If you're interested in reserving picnic areas or campgrounds and wanna mention that you do need to make reservations, it's really easy to do that in our online reservation system, or you can always call the district at our main number, which is available on our website and someone can help you make those reservations. The entrance to Hickory Grove is located off of Hickory Nut Grove Lane in Cary. Now, if you're heading out to a conservation area, chances are you're going to run into some wildlife. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about some good places to see animals. One place that I think is really stellar for bird watching is the North Branch Preserve in Richmond. And this is a restored grassland prairie complex here that the district has been working on restoring for some time now. 
It's home to populations of migratory grassland birds. And that's a great thing because a lot of these species are suffering habitat decline across the Midwest. And so it's even more important than ever to make sure that they have the kind of habitat they need to nest and get the food resources that help them survive. So on a visit to the North Branch Preserve, bring your binoculars for sure, because you'll see species like Eastern meadowlarks, bobolinks, bald eagles, uh, many other types of grassland birds, sandhill cranes, and even on occasion, a whooping crane migrating through with its flock. The North Branch Conservation Area, you might recall from one of the earlier maps I showed you about the Hebron Trail, and you can see the Hebron Trail here to the left, as well as the Prairie Trail to the right. And so the North Branch Conservation Area is serving as this link between those two bike paths, and you can ride your bike or hike on this 1.5 mile trail link through all of those restored prairie areas where the grassland birds are living. A nice thing about this too is if you decide you want to do a long-term bike trip with some bike camping, you can even camp here at the North Branch Preserve. There's no designated campsite. You can just camp out in the field, but you do need to make sure you call ahead and let us know you're going to be out there so we can get you a proper reservation. This is located off of Keystone Road <clears throat> in Richmond, and it butts right up to the Wisconsin state line. Another great place for wildlife watching is down in Lake in the Hills, and that's Axner Marsh. This is a wonderful high quality wetland where you can see species like the black crowned night heron and a lot of our amphibious um, wildlife here like frogs and our reptile wildlife like snapping turtles, painted turtles, and other turtle species. Exter Marsh is a real gem. It's nestled in the middle of a bunch of housing developments and it's almost impossible to tell that it's there until suddenly you've pulled in and you realize that this beautiful wetland complex and some areas of woods is right in front of you. There are two entrances to Exter Marsh. The north entrance is on Miller Road and there's also a more developed southern or western entrance on Lakewood Road where there's a picnic shelter. The two are connected with the trail if you want to hike between the two uh, entrances. And one other thing I want to mention about Exeter Marsh is because it is such a high quality wetland area, it's actually been designated in part as an Illinois State Nature Preserve. 116 acres of that wetland is under that protection, which is the highest level of protection afforded to a high quality natural area by the state of Illinois. So this is a really, really special place and it's a fantastic place to hear frogs singing as soon as it gets warm. Now, these are just two examples of good places to see wildlife, but chances are, as I said, you're gonna see wildlife all over conservation district sites. Just wanna give you a taste of some of the animal residents that you might run into when you're out at one of our sites. From the top left, moving clockwise, we have white-tailed deer at many of our sites. Sandhill cranes migrate through here starting in March and they stay until October. You'll often see breeding pairs raising a baby at different conservation district sites or large flocks of them grouped together at the migratory times of year. We have a ton of different birds, songbirds, um, hummingbirds, woodpeckers like this downy woodpecker at our different sites. We have um, the large mammal predators like coyotes and foxes. Even some badgers have been reported at some of our sites. We have plenty of amphibious and reptile species like this painted turtle. And then finally, we have some aquatic mammals that are always fun to spot like muskrats and beaver. So there's lots of animals to keep your eyes peeled for when you're out on a district site. And while we're talking about making observations of district sites while you're out there, I wanted to talk about some of the places that you can go to enjoy the change of seasons here in the Midwest. A great place for fall colors is Coral Woods down in Marengo. This is a remnant of a much larger original sugar maple dominated forest. And if you have maples in your neighborhood or maybe in your yard, you know how beautiful they can um, get in the fall when the colors start to change. So this is a lovely place to grab a coffee and a friend and take a nice stroll through a colorful woods in the fall. The nice thing about Coral Woods though is it's also putting on a show in the springtime. In fact, right now it is blossoming all over the place, many different types of native wildflowers that are in bloom. If I could recommend one place to go in the next couple of weeks to hike in McHenry County, it would be Coral Woods because the show of flowers is really extraordinary. This is a picture of Trout Lily that was taken out there at the site. Coral Woods is located off of Route 20 
a little bit southeast of Marengo. And to get there, it's a slightly hidden way. There are some signs out there that you can follow, but you're gonna get off of Route 20 on West Coral Road. And then you're going to turn on what looks like a subdivision driveway, Somerset Drive, go through a little um, neighborhood and then the entrance to the park will be tucked back at the end of the road. And it opens up into this beautiful forested area. One thing I also wanna to mention too about Coral Woods is that this is the site where we hold one of our biggest educational events every year, the annual festival of the sugar maples every March. Education staff actually tap the sugar maple trees, collect the sap, boil it down into syrup and teach people all about that process. And the best part is that you get a taste of homemade maple syrup made from trees right at Coral Woods at the end of the program. So definitely bookmark that for next March. It's always a fun time. In the summertime, one of the places that I really like to go is a site known as Silver Creek. This is in Crystal Lake. And it's a good place to go in the summer because it has restored prairie areas uh, at a pretty large scale. And those are filled with friendly plants for pollinators like milkweed and compass plant. And so it's a great place to see monarch butterflies, bumblebees, other types of butterflies. And it's really a joy to see them flitting around looking for nectar. Also a great place to see hummingbirds as well. And if you don't wanna be in the direct sun or you need a break from all that sunshine, you can also take a hike on one of the woodland trails that's at Silver Creek where they go through restored oak woodlands with lots of nice little places to stop and enjoy the shade. Silver Creek is a pretty large conservation area and it's actually located on Behan Road, which comes off of Route 176 on this map. Route 176 would be off just a little ways off the map to the north. And this is the site where our Prairie View Education Center is also situated. And I'm gonna talk more about that place in a little bit. It's one of our two education and visitor centers in the county. You can also see that Silver Creek adjoins the Fox River in different places. Now, it wouldn't be a complete tour of the seasons in McHenry County if we didn't talk about things you could do in the snow. And one thing that often surprises people when they learn about the district for the first time is that we offer snowmobile trails. And one of the best places to get on a snowmobile and take a ride when the weather conditions are right, like the ones we had just this last winter with lots of deep snow, is the Prairie Trail North area. That's the section that goes through Glacial Park. And if you look at this map here, those purple lines are actually the snowmobile trails. And you can see that there's actually a really big route of snowmobile trails that goes up the Prairie Trail and through Glacial Park proper. There's also a lot of outlets that go out of the park and connect with adjacent trail systems on private lands or operated by snowmobile clubs. If you want more information about snowmobiling, again, definitely check out our website and you can get more details there. If you're not into snowmobiling, you like more passive types of snow exploration in the winter, there's a couple things that you can do. You can rent snowshoes in Glacial Park at Lost Valley Visitor Center. I'll talk more about that place in a moment. Try your hand out at some snowshoeing. Or you can also do one of our popular winter activities, which is cross-country skiing. And a great place to do that is Harrison Benwell, which is located in Wonder Lake. Harrison Benwell has really nice trails to get out and ski in the sunshine, or if you want a different kind of experience, you can join one of our evening candlelight ski and hike programs where we put luminaries along the trail and get everybody outdoors enjoying the place by candlelight. We always do one in Harrison Benwell every year, so you can um, keep your eyes peeled for that, and I'll show you how to get information about this and other programs later on. Harrison Benwell is one of our oldest conservation areas. It was protected in 1973, I believe, shortly after the district was founded. It's just 75 acres, but it's a real gem on the east side of Wonder Lake, and you can access that right off of McCollum Lake Road to the east of the lake proper. Now, the district has a long-term commitment to making uh, Americans with Disability Act accessible outdoor experiences available for people who use our sites. Um, so there are a lot of different places where you can find those accessible opportunities. And when you go to our website and use our interactive map, that's actually one of the options you can use to filter selections and get a whole list of places um, with accessible resources. I want to highlight two of them just as an example of places where it's easier to um, use a wheelchair where it's easier to have a flat surface to walk on, where we have paved trail opportunities. 
and that sort of thing. And one of those is the HUM Trail, H-U-M stands for Huntley Union Marengo. This runs on an old railroad bed. It's got patches of incredible remnant prairie along it that has been here since before the railways were put in. And it's a paved trail that runs for 3.5 miles between the communities of Marengo and uh, Union, it goes right into the downtown of each community. And so you can hop on and off in both communities at different areas, or you can do the whole length of the trail. This is a multi-use trail, so it's not only an accessible site, but it's used by hikers, bicyclists, and in the winter by cross-country skiers as well. Another accessible site I'd like to highlight tonight is at Brookdale. So Brookdale is one of our large sites in the center of the county in rural Woodstock. And this is a place that has a paved trail that goes around a fishing pond on the site. And there's another accessible fishing platform out there that's accessible by wheelchair if needed. This is a pond that is periodically stocked. We have largemouth bass, bluegill, crappie, green sunfish, and bullhead in this lake. And there's actually a couple of different fishing ponds. The one that has the accessible platform and the paved trail is the one that's over to the left on this picture. That's our 11 acre pond. And then there are a few other ponds that you can fish in that aren't um, accessed by an accessible trail that are further to the northeast in this site. Brookdale is also home to the district's main headquarters. So our office building is located on this property as well. And you're going to get to Brookdale by heading uh, west out of Woodstock on Route 14, and you'll find the entrance on the north side of Route 14 before you get into Harvard. Now, I just mentioned that our headquarters are located at Brookdale, but we also have a couple other buildings where we have offices and public facilities together in one. And one of those is Lost Valley Visitor Center inside Glacial Park. And I want to highlight this with another site as well as places where you can take the kids and have a, a extended experience with some different activities that are family friendly. At Lost Valley Visitor Center, we have a permanent museum exhibit called Passport to Lost Valley Adventures. It's a fun way to learn about the ecology and the geology of Glacial Park. You can spend some time reading nature books in our public nature library, check out who's visiting the bird feeding station, maybe take some photos of that. Uh, and we also have a program called Explorer Backpacks that you can check out and take with you on the trails to use binoculars and do some other activities to extend your visit to Glacial Park. We also have that other education center that I mentioned a while back when I was talking about Silver Creek Conservation Area. This is again Prairie View Education Center located at Silver Creek. We do a lot of educational programs out of this building and it also has an indoor exploration station filled with family friendly nature activities and games. A caveat with Prairie View in particular, Lost Valley's public facilities are now fully open with some modifications for COVID safety. We're in the process of opening up the exploration station again at Prairie View. So if you're interested in visiting that in the near future, I would encourage you to call ahead and just make sure that it's open. If not, we might have to wait a little bit until we're fully operational again. I'd like to highlight some other recreational programs as well that cover multiple district sites. And the first one is our hunting program. We offer deer hunting, waterfowl hunting, and turkey hunting. It's run by a lottery system for McHenry County residents first and then out of county residents. There are fees involved and hunter safety education requirements, and you can find all the details to participate and join that program by, again, going to our website for more information. We also have a very popular education program known as the Century Hikers Club. Now, if you like to go hike on district sites, you can join the Century Hikers Club with a nominal fee up front and then track your miles as you hike at district sites on your own time. And then you turn in those miles to the district and at each benchmark from 100 miles to 2,000 miles hiked, you get different prizes and incentives. It's a really wonderful way to meet other people who enjoy hiking. And one of the features of this program is we do special quarterly hikes with district educators at sites that maybe are not normally open to the public on a year round basis because they have critical wildlife habitat. Or maybe we get to experience a site uh, during the full moon at night 
or other interesting perks to keep people moving and interested and enjoying the program. This is a really great way to make friends again, as I said, and if you're going to be out hiking anyway and that's an activity you enjoy, why not get prizes for it? You can check out the Century Hikers Club, of course, at our website. We also do run outdoor skills clinics and other special events. This is a picture of one of our fishing derbies at the Hollows where we get beginner fisher, uh, uh, fishing people out to uh, learn how to do this for the first time. Really cool experience to watch the kids um, try their hands at fishing and catch something. We've also offered clinics on uh, learning how to kayak, learning how to canoe, learning how to paddleboard. So those are education programs that are advertised on a quarterly basis. And again, I'm gonna show you in just a moment how you can get access to all of that information. We also have geocaches hidden all over district sites around the county. If you like to go geocaching already or you're interested in trying your hand at it, this is a great family-friendly activity. It's like a treasure hunt. And we have people of all ages from retirement age down to very young kids who really enjoy this activity. Um, so that's definitely something to check out as well. I want to highlight some of our education programs because these offer opportunities to not only connect and meet people, connect with and meet people at district sites, but to experience different activities and different aspects of district sites as well. I'll give you just a, a sampling of the types of education programs we offer annually. We do nighttime hikes and we do moonlight paddles down the Neverseen Creek or out at the hollows on Lake Atwood. We offer outdoor fitness activities like yoga outdoors or CrossFit. We do those clinics that I mentioned to help teach people skills like how to paddle a kayak. We have hiking programs of all different levels for all different abilities. You can learn about nature and science in one of our more traditional environmental education programs or enjoy one of the programs where we try to weave in things like music and art for a different angle learning about nature. And we have a ton of programs that are family friendly and kid friendly, including our popular summer camps, which are filling up as we speak right now. Now, if all of that is not enough to get you started with the district, I also want to mention something that helps you dig a little bit deeper into what we do and gets you access to other district sites and areas that aren't regularly open to the public. And that is our volunteer program. Volunteers are absolutely crucial to the district's operations. They provide so much help and it's a really fun experience building that community of friends with your fellow volunteers. We have volunteers that work with us for native seed collection, for restoration projects such as site cleanups and invasive species removal. We have volunteers like the one in this picture who help us with education programs. This gentleman is teaching people all about um, maple sap production at our Festival of the Sugar Maples by leading a program there. And we also have people that help out our district police by keeping our sites safe in the sweep program. So there's lots of things to do. And again, check out our website to learn how you can get involved with volunteering. And that brings me to, once again, where to get all of this information and get signed up for things and plan your visits to district sites. You named it, it's going to be our website, mccdistrict.org, your one-stop shop for everything related to the conservation district. You can also find us on social media. We post regularly on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can use the hashtag discovermccd to find us there. And you also would um, want to consider, I think, signing up for our news updates. We have a quarterly publication, Landscapes Magazine, that comes out every season. And that includes all of the upcoming programs and events, information about how to register for those programs and events, the latest news about the district, information about sites to help you understand a little bit more about the work that we're doing, fun articles, informative information, um, and so Landscapes is available uh, uh, year round for download from our website uh, in PDF form. You can also sign up to get a paper copy mailed to you if you're a McHenry County resident or you live within 20 miles of the county border. We also have an e-newsletter version of Landscapes that goes out through email as well. And you can sign up for each version of those again at the Conservation District website. 
And with that, we're going to wrap for tonight. I hope that this has given you just a taste of the abundant outdoor opportunities that we have here for fun activities outside right here in McHenry County. We're really fortunate to live in an area with so many resources available to us to explore and enjoy the outdoors. If you haven't visited a district site before, I hope this piques your interest to try. And if you are familiar with the district, I hope you learned about a new place or a new activity tonight that you're interested in trying. Again, go to our website for all of the latest information to make a site reservation, to sign up for a program to learn how to volunteer and how to plan your visit to a district site. That's mccdistrict.org. I hope you enjoyed tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and take care.